Hey guys, today we're going to do a comparison between a mirrorless camera and a smartphone camera and see how they compare to pretty much see how smartphone cameras have improved throughout the years and how they actually compare to mirrorless and DSLR cameras. In this video, I really want to see if smartphone cameras can finally replace main DSLR or mirrorless cameras to see if you could finally ditch your DSLR or mirrorless and take your smartphone everywhere and take photos. So today we'll be comparing Sony's A5000 mirrorless camera which has an APS-C size sensor and LG's G2. The A5000 is a beginner's or budget oriented camera, kind of, so it makes sense comparing it to a smartphone camera and let's see how this goes. Sony's A5000 comes with a 20.1 megapixel sensor while LG's G2 comes with a 13 megapixel sensor. Uh, Sony has a APS-C size sensor while LG has one third inch CMOS sensor. Sony has a f3.5 lens while the LG G2 has a f2.4 lens and LG also has optical image stabilization. One of the key things about LG G2 is that it has 60 FPS video, something that Sony does not have. It only has 50 FPS at 1080i, so it's kind of surprising that a phone has better features than an actual camera, a mirrorless camera. But without further ado, let's head on to the first image comparison. Alright, so the first image here shows how well both cameras perform with backlight. So first of all, A5000 does really well. It focused on the object perfectly and it adjusted the exposure according to the object it focused on. Unlike the G2, which focused on the object fine with the type to focus, but it adjusted the exposure according to the background, which resulted in pretty much a washed out image that lacks detail. This image was captured in the medium to low light environment and you could really see how both cameras form. The A5000 does quite well preserves detail, but the lighting is a bit low, but on the other hand, G2 provides a, a brighter image, but it is a bit washed out again, something that G2's processing always does. I took another photo with flash on this time, and you could see that with flash directly on the object, it doesn't look that great on the A5000, but with a little bit of tilt back flash action, it really makes the image look good. So good in fact that you can't even tell that much difference from natural lighting. On the G2 side, the image doesn't turn out that great at all. The flash obviously isn't that powerful, so it doesn't light up the object perfectly and obviously you can't tilt the flash, so you can't give that natural lighting feel. And it's really recommended that you don't use flash on phones for a reason. This is an extremely low light shot, and the A5000 fares not bad. You could see some ISO inside though, but it's not extreme, and it does have reddish tint from the orange light at the back, but overall, not a bad image. On the other hand, G2's image doesn't turn out that well. It looks like a photo taken from a 2001 year old camera that has high level noise, and it's pretty much garbage. But we do have to remember that this is a phone camera and it does have a sensor that's multiple times smaller than the APS-C sensor in A5000. So maybe we could let this slide. Next is the same image with flash on on the A5000 and it's not bad, but this is even better which is flash tilted. But surprisingly, the G2 does pretty well. With flash on, um, you can't really tell the difference between A5000 and G2 between this photo. So this is a light intensity photo from the A5000 of a light bulb, and it does a pretty good job with it. It does not lose detail because of the light, and it preserves the tiles behind and takes a pretty good shot. But the G2 really overexposes the image according to the light source, and you really lose some details in the light. But the photo is taken outside in really good lighting conditions. Turn out pretty well on both cameras, the G2 and the A5000. The A5000 produces really crisp, contrasting images, and they're really good. However, on the G2 side, 
The images are great, but it does lose some detail because of overexposing the image. But other than that, it's pretty good. And here's an example of A5000 and G2's video recording capabilities. Both do really good, however A5000 stands undefeated. The video from the A5000 is pretty much everything. It's crisp, it's soft at the same time, the colours are perfect, it's amazing. And the G2 does a pretty good job with it, but it's not as good. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't compare well with other DSLRs and mirrorless cameras as well. So, in conclusion, you could really say that smartphones have come a long way in the camera department. Um, they're pretty much comparable to mirrorless or DSLRs in really high light environments, but in medium or low light they don't really stand a chance at all. So even if for a couple of years smartphones cameras do improve, it's not a reason for you to ditch your DSLR or mirrorless camera and take your smartphone everywhere. But it's good to know that in a couple of decades, that day might actually come. So I'll see you guys in another video. Hope you guys like, subscribe and comment. And yeah, bye.